up throughout this place this evening. Let's worship God. Sing out that song we want to see. We want to see Jesus be lifted on high in this place. Let's lift up our voice, church. Let's worship God. Sing out that song, Holy is the Lord God Almighty.
praise and all the honor in this place. Church, we're going to lift up our hands in this place. How many know through the name of Jesus Christ we have dominion in our lives? Amen. Because of the blood that Jesus Christ shed. Let's lift up our hands. Let's worship God. Sing out that song at the name of Jesus. Glory wants to 
build this place, set it ablaze, and I'll be a God in this place. Oh Lord Jesus, we magnify you. We exalt you. We praise your mighty name in this place. Oh, Amen. Yes, God is worthy of all the praise and all the honor, church. We're going to go before our king this evening, believing God to meet with us, to speak to us. We're going to pray that God's going to have his way in this assembly this evening. Uh, let's lift up our pastor that God would give him the mind of Christ this evening, a word uh, in due season that would touch each and every one of our lives. Uh, we want to pray. We want to lift up our baby works. Amen. Uh, we want to pray for the nation of Ecuador. Amen. As tomorrow. Also, we want to pray for our church. Uh, they're going to be taking an impact team of 15 people uh, traveling tomorrow. Amen. To Ecuador. So we want to believe God for traveling mercies. Uh, we want to pray for this revival with Pastor Ramirez this week. Um, that God's going to move there in our nation. Amen. Um, that God's going to speak. Um, it's just going to be a tremendous time. We want to believe God uh, uh, for for every personal need in this place, so want to pray uh, that God's going to move, God's going to speak to every life, to every heart. So how many have a personal need this evening? You would signify that by the uplifting of your hand. We serve a good, we serve a mighty God, church, um, who sees each and every need in this place. So we're going to believe God to move, um, God to help us, amen, this evening. Um, let's lift up our voice in prayer. Let's believe God to come down to touch us. Um, and as we open up in this praise, so I'm going to ask um, uh, Brother Jeff Roche, you would bring us before God's throne. Yes, Lord Jesus, you are worthy of all the praise and all the honor, God. 
We come before you asking you to move in our midst, God, in signs, in wonders, in miracles. God, we are contending for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, a move of God in this place. Lord, we are asking you to speak to every life, speak to every heart, God. We give you right away in our service, God, and we thank you for everything you're going to do this evening, God. Hallelujah, Father God, we come before you this evening, Lord, by the blood of Jesus. Father God, we're believing that you would move, Father God, in the power and dominion of your spirit, Lord. Lord, that you would anoint our pastor, Lord. Give him the mind of Christ this evening, Lord. Lord, let him speak a word in due season unto our hearts, Lord. Lord, we pray, Father God, that you would just, Father God, go with us as we go, Father God, to Ecuador. Lord, that you would open up hearts and minds, Father God, that will be receptive to your word, Lord, Father God. That you would bring revival to that country, Lord, Father God. We give you praise and glory for all that you're going to do tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. To North Mesa, you may turn and greet one another. Can you believe what the Lord has done in me? Can you believe what the Lord has done in me? Save me, cleanse me, turn my life around, set my feet upon the solid ground. Can you believe what the Lord has done in me? Good evening, North Mesa, and welcome to our midweek service. In case you forgot, my name is Luis, and here are your midweek announcements. If you're a teen in this place, join us for Edge Ministry this Friday at 7 p.m. in our 180 building. This is a great opportunity for you to engage in your fellow peers and live for Christ together. For any additional questions, please see our teen director, Larry James. This Saturday, join us for prayer starting at 9.30 a.m. After that, we'll be doing our Walmart Blitz Outreach. This is a great opportunity to band together for our community and share the love of Jesus Christ. Join us Saturday evening at 6 p.m. for prayer. At 7 p.m., we'll be doing our Walmart Blitz Outreach for our upcoming revival with Pastor Artie Aragon on August 14th through the 16th. And of course, we hope you join us for our Sunday morning service. We have group prayer at 9.30 p.m. with service to follow at 11 a.m. Don't forget to catch our adult Sunday school in between where we are discussing memorial stones. Have a wonderful rest of the service. We thank you for your faithfulness and support in building the kingdom of God. We'll see you next week. Amen. Uh, just want to remind everybody... Uh, encourage everybody to come out this Saturday. We do need all hands on deck. We need help. Uh, we, September, we have a very, very busy, or sorry, I'm already skipping months. Uh, August, we have a very, very busy month. Uh, we have our Pirates play, the Blood Covenant. Uh, that will be next month, uh, beginning on the 12th, uh, running three consecutive Saturdays. They put a lot of work into this. It's, uh, it's coming along really well. I was able to preview it last night. That we're going to have a good time with that play. We're going to have revival with Pastor Artie Aragon next month. Amen. Uh, there, everything's going on, but God's going to move. Amen. Uh, and then also, uh, just want to look ahead very quickly. Amen. People keep on asking, uh, Pastor, are we going camping in this year? Yes, we are going camping. Uh, that will be September 21st to the 23rd. Uh, we'll have some more announcements about that as it comes very soon. But if you need to put the time in for that, that's September 21st to the 23rd. And then uh, very quickly this evening right after service, uh, we need to meet with all the ushers, all the ushers. And then right after the usher or with the ushers, uh, I need all the leaders. And then after that, uh, we'll have a leaders meeting this evening right after service. And then uh, this uh, one more house announcement. Parents, please help us out. Uh, we've had several incidences already uh, where young children have marked on our chairs with markers. Amen. So please, this is uh, courtesy coming across the pulpits. Amen. Um, do not give your kids markers in the house of God. Okay. Do not give your kids markers in the house of God. These chairs are property. It's very expensive. We not just that. This is your investment. Uh, so don't give your kids markers. Uh, don't make me become the bad guy. Uh, if the ushers come, they ask you to Throw that marker away. Put that marker away. They're doing that on behalf of me, on behalf of pastor. 
Uh, so don't get upset with them. Treat your ki- or teach your kids, amen, how to respect the house of God. So please, we've had several incidences where kids are chewing gum. They're putting gum on the chairs. Uh, they're marking on the chairs. Uh, just different stuff. This is not their house. This is the house of God. So help us out, uh, please. And uh, you will be blessed and I will be blessed, amen. I won't lose no hair, amen. I'll keep this uh, great haircut, amen, for some time, amen. Um, uh, but that's all the announcements I have this evening, amen. We're going to turn it over to our pastor. Praise the Lord who's got the victory tonight. Amen. It's good to be in God's house. Hallelujah. We thank God for your goodness, for his goodness, rather, your goodness too. Hallelujah. (laughs) We thank God for his goodness tonight. Amen. And so uh, we want to take the Lord's offering tonight. As the ushers come uh, forward, church, let's give the Lord a clap offering tonight. Hallelujah. (laughs) What a privilege it is to give to God tonight. Can you say amen? amen? Somebody believes it. Hallelujah. How many believe it's, it's a privilege to give to the Lord tonight? Amen. God always is faithful to us, church. Amen. Uh, and so we thank God uh, for his goodness. Uh, you hear me say it all the time. Together we could do it. We can never do it alone. Hallelujah. Uh, perfect example of this. Uh, we want to say, first of all, thank you to everybody that helped to take to get some stuff uh, for the Chacon family. Uh, to be able to take down there to them. Uh, And many times when we go over there also, there's a couple other missionary families that are there. Uh, And so my wife will always ask them, is there anything that we can bring for you guys? Uh, uh, They know that we're bringing things over for uh, the Chacon family, and that's kind of the... Uh, the main thrust and so they usually will try to you know say well we think we're fine and then at the last minute they'll send a bunch of stuff that can you bring this <laughs> and uh, you know we want to bless them so they did that uh, uh, and our table and beyond the table countertops was full of clothing full of uh, different goodies that they can't get there that everybody contributed for uh, so we appreciate that hallelujah we appreciate your giving for that uh, but uh, for us to get it there, it took uh, all of us that on the party uh, that are going down there to take a little. And that's what I mean by together we can do what we can never do alone. Can you say amen? One will chase a thousand, two will put ten thousand to flight. Hallelujah. There was, I would have had to pay for five uh, suitcases to go down there and they get very expensive beyond uh, your suitcase, but because everybody was able to take a little bit, uh, amen, we only had to pay for one extra suitcase. Uh, and so how many of God is good tonight? Come on. Hallelujah. And we do that for a purpose and for a reason. Amen. Uh, they're there. They're sacrificing. They're giving their, uh, their, uh, their lives. Hallelujah. They're giving their time. Amen. They, uh, everything towards trying to build a work towards God. Their children are there sacrificing. Hallelujah. In a foreign land, in a foreign country. Hallelujah. And we shout the victory here for that. Hallelujah. But when you're on the other side, amen, it's a big sacrifice. It's a big, big sacrifice, hallelujah. And so we appreciate them for doing that, but we also appreciate those that are here that partner together to be able to be a blessing for those that will go, hallelujah. And so uh, tonight, I just want to continue to encourage you, church, to be faithful, to be liberal towards world evangelism, towards church planting. Uh, uh, The children's church uh, typically will uh, begin to gather uh, uh, they begin you know to, to put aside money uh, and they did that this time knowing that we were going to be going hallelujah and so uh, brother Robert gave me uh, some of that this tonight but I'm going to go ahead and have them to, to continue to hold that and do it towards the end of the year uh, so that they can get one lump sum hallelujah uh, but we appreciate the children that they've got a vision for world evangelism. Can you say amen? And they're giving, hallelujah. And so what a privilege that is, church. I'm telling you, you begin to impart that into their lives, into their hearts. Uh, and, man, they're going to be a blessed, blessed people. Why? Because God is into this. God is into this. If God can get money through you, he'll get money to you. And God opens the windows of heaven and pours out blessing that we don't have room to receive it tonight. Hallelujah. And so let's give with a cheerful heart tonight, church. You give it. You bless the Lord. Let's bow our hearts before God tonight. Uh, I want to ask uh, if Brother uh, brother Reuben, can you ask God's blessing on this gift tonight? God, we thank you for allowing us to give, to provide for your word upon this earth. These precious people come to the faith and knowledge of Christ Jesus. God, let us continue to grow in obedience. Give God as you first gave to us, God. Bless once again to the giver in Jesus' name. 
Amen. As that play goes around, beloved, let's sing a song of worship to the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, can you believe? Can you believe what the Lord has done in me? Can you believe what the Lord has done in me? He saved me, cleansed me, turned my life around, set my feet up on the solid ground. Can you believe what the Lord has done in me? Hallelujah. Thank you, platform musicians, workers, for your ministry tonight. Hallelujah. How many excited for the Lord? Come on. It is good to be in God's house tonight. Hallelujah. And so uh, if you've got your Bibles, let's turn to the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6 is going to be my text. I want to minister a message I've entitled uh, The Good Fight. Hallelujah. There's an old saying, uh, it's not necessarily the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. Amen? And so uh, there was a lady, a uh, young lady, that, uh, were you able to get those two pictures loaded up? Okay, so we're going to want to see uh, the one with the injury first and the other one second. Hallelujah. Appreciate that. Uh, our media team is on the spot. They're starting to read my mind. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so there was a, uh, there was a, a dog. Uh, basically, it was a, it was a story of a, of a dog that saved her owner. Um, and what happened was Eva, that's a dog's name, heroically saved her owner's life during a mountain lion attack. And so this is a two-year-old uh, shepherd, and so just a pup still, by all means. And so Erin uh, Wilson and her two-year-old dog, Eva, they were taking a little stroll in the afternoon uh, sun, and all of a sudden, tragedy strikes. Uh, one second, she hears a weird noise, uh, and then the next, a mountain lion scrapes uh, its claws across her shoulder. And so uh, then it comes back preparing for another attack. Erin uh, screams, uh, and as she does that, Eva the pup, uh, without hesitation, charges uh, the cougar with all her might. Amen? And uh, sadly, the cat got the upper hand, uh, biting down on the dog's head. And, uh, you know, Erin wasn't giving... Uh, her dog up though right and so the cougar basically the the mountain lion bites on the dog and then the fight is on now the owner begins to throw rocks she actually got in tries to separate them she tries choking the lion the mountain lion she's trying to uh grab at its, uh, at its eyes, uh, scrape at its eyes, uh, uh, and the whole time the mountain lion is biting down on her two-year-old pup uh, who came to save her life. Uh, uh, I think finally she was able to get her fingers into the mountain lion's eyes, uh, and another passerby saw this and hit it with a, a PVC pipe, uh, and the mountain lion runs off uh, into the distance, but it wasn't before the dog sustained some life-threatening injuries. And so can you show that first uh, picture there? And so this is the poor dog uh, trying to be nursed back uh, to life. Uh, it began to have, uh, the, what happened was it suffered, you can take it off now. Uh, it suffered two skull fractures, suffered a puncture sinus cavity, severe damage uh, to her left eye, and uh, began to experience uh, seizures. Uh, and uh, she began to do like a uh, fund me account to try to help the dog back uh, 
uh, to, to nurse it back to life, and it's unsure whether the dog was actually going to live. Now, I'm thinking about uh, the good fight uh, because uh, here's this dog, amen, uh, without hesitation, it tries to save its owner. Hello? The mountain lion, no doubt, is twice as large uh, as this dog. It's only a pup, hallelujah. But uh, as I said, it's not how big the dog in the fight, but rather how big the fight in the dog. And many times, amen, what happens is uh, we have a wicked adversary that is trying to destroy our lives. Can you say amen? Amen. And in the text that we're about to read, uh, amen, I want to read it out of the Amplified Version, 1 Timothy chapter 6, uh, verse 11 through 20. The Apostle Paul is talking about the good fight. Uh, you often hear me say that there is uh, anything that is good in life is worth fighting for. Amen. Whether that be, uh, as I ministered the other day, a marriage, uh, uh, relationships, uh, your salvation, uh, uh, your children, uh, anything good in life is worth fighting for. Can I get a witness tonight? And Paul likens this Christian walk uh, as a good fight. Hallelujah. Let's read 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 through 20, and we'll get into the word tonight. Uh, it says, but as for you, O man of God, flee these things, aim to pursue righteousness, true goodness, moral conformity to the character of God. And again, this is out of the Amplified Version. Uh, godliness, the fear of God, faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith, the conflict with evil. Take hold of the eternal life which you were called uh, and for which you were made the good confession of faith in the presence of many witnesses. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and in the presence of Christ Jesus who made the good confession in his testimony before Pontius Pilate to keep all his precepts without stain or reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, to keep fighting until the Lord returns. Amen. Which he will bring out in his own time. He who is a blessed and only sovereign, the absolute ruler, the king of those who reign as king of kings and lord of lords. He alone possesses immortality or absolute exemption from death and lives in unapproachable light, whom no man has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal power and dominion. Amen. Verse 17, as for the rich in this present world, instruct them not to be conceited and arrogant, nor to set their hope on earth's uncertain riches, but on God. Paul is urging Amen, Timothy, to not put your faith and urge people that are in the church to not put their faith in certain riches, but to put it on God, who richly and uh, ceaselessly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Verse 18, instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous, willing to share with others. In this way, storing up for themselves the enduring riches of a good foundation for the future or the life to come, so that they may lay hold of that which is eternal and true life. Verse 20, O Timothy, guard and keep safe the deposit of godly truth. How many know we need to guard godliness? The godly truth that was entrusted to you, turn away from worldly and godless chatter. I'll say it again, turn away from worldly and godless chatter with its profane, empty words. Let that sit in for a second. Has your chatter been godly or has it been godless? Has it been for edification or has it been profane and empty words that don't edify? That's for free tonight. With profane, empty words and the contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge, which some have professed uh, and by doing so have erred, missing the mark. You know, that's what sin actually is. 
The, word, the Greek word for the word sin is the word hamartia, which means to miss the mark. It says some have erred from the faith, missed the mark, and strayed from the faith. But grace be to you. Amen. Let's pray tonight. Hallelujah. Father, we're asking you tonight uh, for the anointing of your Holy Spirit, God, that you would uh, allow every word to meet its mark in the hearts of your people tonight. Help us to fight this good fight of faith, Lord. And help us to put our hope and our trust not in the world or worldly things uh, or in sensual things, God, but help us, God, to be spiritually minded and to walk in faith and truth tonight. We give you glory for all that you're going to do in Jesus' wonderful name. And all God's people said, amen. I want to look at a couple characters in the Bible in just a minute, amen. But honing in on Paul right now and what he's speaking about here in 1 Timothy. And then later on in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says, I have fought the good fight. This is towards the end of his race he says i have finished the race i have kept the faith this well-known and often quoted passage it's very significant it's a significant epistle amen because here is paul's last words before his martyrdom this is paul's last words before he's going to be killed for his faith and so uh, as you've heard me say many times before that whenever somebody is on their deathbed how many of their words matter probably most at that moment amen they're trying to sum up life he's he's uh, knows that his end is nearing and he's saying listen man you need to fight this good fight of faith i've kept the faith i've finished the race amen and listen this is what paul is encouraging us to do i have fought the good fight he said hallelujah and so this is a moving affirmation of his unwavering faith and his unyielding love for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, I fought the good fight. It's also significant for us today to understand, amen, that uh, uh, we are in a struggle. How many would say amen tonight? How many would say and believe that, that Paul, amen, his words that he was speaking to Timothy uh, back then, it connotes, amen, where we find ourselves even today. Hello? We are many times in a fight. Can you say amen? We're in a continual struggle against the flesh, a continual fight against evil, against uh, the world, against godlessness. Hallelujah. And so many times that fight is also within ourselves. Am I talking to anybody? And so in, earlier in the same letter, amen, Paul reminded Timothy to endure hardships uh, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ amen and so when we begin to break this down uh, amen when he says I have fought the good fight uh, it's the Greek word agonizmaia and I know I butchered that hallelujah but I don't speak Greek <laughs> and so uh, it literally means to engage into a battle to engage into conflict amen the words that he is using uh, uh, they're either speaking of uh, uh, engaging into athletic games or into military conflict. This is what it's liking this fight to. And so consider Paul was chained to a Roman soldier when he wrote uh, this epistle. It would have been easy for him to make this analogy. And so here is Paul. Uh, uh, he knew what it was to be a soldier because he was a soldier himself. Amen. But now he's in prison. And not for anything that he did wrong, but for fighting the good fight. Am I talking to anybody tonight? In other words, when you choose to do right, you're not always going to be the most popular person in the room. Hello? Everybody's not going to praise you for wanting to do right and wanting to live for God and to live for Christ. Uh, but you've got to make a decision whether you're going to endure hardships uh, as a good soldier or whether you're going to cave in to what everybody else is saying. Am I talking to anybody tonight? And so our battle is not with the flesh. We understand that. Or excuse me, it's not flesh and blood. Amen. It's against principalities the bible says in ephesians he talks about we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against the rulers of wickedness spiritual hosts of darkness in those heavenly places this is talking about amen uh, the undermining of hell to try to come against anything good that god has in your life uh, 
So the Christian life is a fight. How many can say amen tonight? And so as Christians, amen, uh, uh, we've got to understand this, uh, hallelujah, and uh, we are not uh, uh, in this earthly fight, but it's a spiritual, it's an eternal fight, amen? Without question, the Apostle Paul, amen, he continued fighting, he never quit. How many know he went through some things? Hello? He went through more things than we could ever even imagine tonight, uh, his campaign to spread the gospel, amen, it began on the Damascus Road where he was knocked off his high horse and eventually took him across the ancient world onto four missionary journeys, amen. He established uh, the church. He established many churches, amen. Uh, he witnesses to Felix and King Agrippa, amen. Uh, and he just had this very powerful, powerful ministry, amen. And when here he is at the end of his life, he's summing it up, uh, as a good fight. How many know tonight living for God is a good thing? Hello? Doing right is a good thing. It's not always the easiest thing. Hello, somebody. But it is the best thing. Am I talking to anybody tonight? It is a good fight, a fight that is worth fighting tonight. Can you say amen? And so I would encourage you, don't stop fighting. Hallelujah. Why? Because just like this lion, right? So the Bible says the enemy, he's like a roaring lion, amen, seeking who may be devoured. He's crouching like sin, that it crouches, it lies at the door. And if we're not careful, hallelujah, we can give in to it tonight, amen. Consider with me also King David, amen. When we talk about David, there are several truths that come to our mind. Number one, he was anointed to be king of Israel. Number two, he was a shepherd, right? He sinned with Bathsheba, we know this, amen, but the Bible says he was a man after God's own heart. Uh, uh, we know that his son was the wisest man that ever lived, amen, and, and uh, we, we read about the story in the life of David and Goliath and all these different victories that he had, uh, and you know that David was a man of war. Hello? This is why God wouldn't allow him to build the temple, right? Because he says, listen, your hands have shed blood, amen, and so I'm not going to allow you to build the temple, hallelujah. But listen, David uh, was a fighter tonight. His life, if you'll stop and look at it, was seasoned with battle after battle, difficulty after difficulty. But not only that, disappointment after disappointment. Hello, somebody. And so how many can relate tonight? That, listen, it seems sometimes, amen, as we're trying to live for God, it's a battle. And sometimes it's battle after battle or it's struggle after struggle. Sometimes even disappointment after disappointment. Uh, hello, church. And I'm not saying in ministering this to be gloom tonight, uh, but to preach the reality is that this is a good fight. Hello? And that, listen, you're going to struggle at times. You're going to fight at times. Uh, sometimes you're going to win these fights. There's going to be times that you lose. Uh, amen. Our hope is to have dominion over this flesh. Paul says, I crucify my flesh daily. Right? Why? Because the flesh is always warring against the spirit, man. He wants out. He doesn't want you to live for God. He doesn't want the good things that God has for you. Uh, and so here we see the Apostle Paul, the good fight. Uh, here we see David, amen. Uh, and the thing that sticks out, uh, amen, is the fact that David never quit fighting. Hello. He never gave in. He never quit. Uh, his life, as I said, was battle after battle, but he never quit making advancements. That's the key tonight. Am I talking to anybody? As long as you're continuing to fight, as long as you're moving forward, uh, as long as you're making advancements and you're gaining ground, then how many know you're going to make heaven your home? But the moment that you begin to back up, the moment that you begin to give in, the moment that you begin to wave the white flag, the moment that you allow the enemy to begin to undermine your faith, uh, the moment that you quit fighting... You're in big trouble. Hello, somebody. He never quit making advancements. He never quit fighting. He understood something that God was on his side and that he was going to win the war. Hello, somebody. In its column, 
you asked us, there was a Canadian magazine uh, that dealt with Hitler's use of the swastika. Included in their article was the following statement. It said, in the end of the National Reach Church had been established, the swastika had replaced the cross. Point 30 of the proposed National Reach Church's 30-point program drawn up during the war read, on the day of its foundation, the Christian cross must be removed from all churches, cathedrals, and chapels. It must be superseded by the only unconquerable symbol, the swastika. This was Hitler's plan. He literally was saying, listen, man, we have to remove the cross uh, from, the ch from the church. Uh, why? Because he understood, uh, just like hell, hell understands what the cross means. Can you say amen? The Bible says if they would have known that they were crucifying the Lord of glory and what was going to happen that day, then they would not have followed through with it. Hallelujah. And here's Hitler. He's saying, listen, we need to replace the cross with this symbol of anarchy, isn't that what the devil is still trying to do today? Hello? Years down the road, amen, hundreds of years down the road, uh, uh, thousands of years uh, down the road from when Christ died, the devil is still trying to replace the cross, amen, and listen, uh, he'll try to do it first of all in your heart. Hello? History is the commentary of the folly of history's dreams and the futility of all who would seek to destroy the church of Christ. So when we consider David, amen, how many know there are always going to be wars? Hello? There's always going to be these battles. The Bible, uh, amen, is nothing but a history of wars of God versus Satan, uh, good versus evil, and we see it throughout its pages. First Samuel chapter 17, it says, Now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and uh, were gathered together at Sokoth, uh, which belongs to Judah. They encamped between Sokoth and Azek uh, and the eaves uh, them in First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.18. Uh, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, uh, it's the power of God. And so here we see, uh, amen, enemies constantly trying to fight against uh, the children of God. Uh, why? Because it wants to take out our message. Hello, somebody. And if he can remove the power of the cross and what it represents to you and get you to undermine that or get you to sell out cheap, uh, Come on, isn't that his strategy all the time? To get you to sell out for a few moments of pleasure, hello? To put something else before truth, before, listen, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Pursue truth, pursue righteousness, pursue godliness, lay hold of eternal life. Flee from unrighteousness. Flee from godless chatter. Why? He's urging the church, hallelujah, to lay hold of what God has for us. Hello, somebody. And as long as you and I will live and do according to the word of God, there's going to be attacks and assaults that are going to come against us. There'll be attacks and assaults against you personally. There'll be attacks and assaults against the church. Hello? Hello? There'll be attacks and assaults against your family, amen. Uh, it'll be, listen, why? Because the devil's constantly trying to see where he can gain a foothold on us. Sokoth belonged to Judah, and they were defending what was rightfully theirs against the enemy, against the Philistines, hallelujah. The Philistines had come in to try to take it away from them. And how many of that's is how, this is how it is, uh, amen. God has given us inheritance tonight God listen God is giving you hope and a future if you were to continue your days living out for Christ uh, the Bible says I hasn't seen ear hasn't heard what has uh, what God has prepared for you but the devil tries to come in and take that but he has no right to it can you say amen the only right that he has is the rights that you give him. Oh, come on, talk to me tonight. And how do we begin to give him access? It's very simple, isn't it? 
If a man knows to do right uh, and doesn't do it, then to him it's sin. Hello? Isn't that what God said, amen, to Cain? He says, Cain, if you just do right, won't it be well with you? But if you don't do right, then sin lies at the door and his desire is after you. Come on, this is from the very first uh, family, hallelujah. We can take it all the way back to the Garden of Eden, even before Cain and Abel. Can you say amen? It's the inward battle to either obey God or to be beguiled by the serpent. To give in to the flesh, amen, to go astray in the heart. Am I talking to anybody tonight? Matthew 11, verse 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent shall take it by force. What is this talking about? It's talking about the fight. Am I talking to anybody? We know what the Bible says about Satan. He's the liar, right? He's a thief. He's a roaring lion. Amen. He's a murderer, the deceiver, the accuser of the brethren. Amen. He's the God of this world. He's the angel of light. Amen. He's the enemy. But why is it if we know these things, do we give in to his temptation so easily? Come on, am I talking to anybody tonight? I'll say it again. The only power that Satan has over you is the power that you give him. Hello? If you give him no access, then he has no power. Why? Because my Bible says greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Hello, somebody. I serve a big and mighty God. Amen. And through him, all things are possible. But when we begin to give the devil access, hello, by lies, by compromise, by when we know to do right but don't do it, through gossip, through slander, through whatever it may be, lusts, lust of the flesh, pride of life, the list goes on and on. We begin to give him power over us, and then it doesn't feel like a good fight anymore, does it? Come on, how many would say that serving God and living for Christ is a good fight? We all know it's a fight, amen, and it's a good fight. But when you're walking in the flesh, you don't view this as a good fight. Hello? Serving God becomes a shore. It becomes a burden. There's pastor. He just wants to be up in my business. Listen, I got too many people to worry about to be worried about your business. I'm just trying to, amen, stay sane myself. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and this is the goal, church. He wants to take back or take that, excuse me, which belongs to God. Not only that, but he wants to rob you of the promises of God. Can you say amen? Listen, this is nothing new. Hallelujah. But sometimes we just need to be reminded that we are involved in a fight. We're involved in a battle and a war. And the enemy only has power when you give it to him. This is why you go what you go through sometimes. Like fighting right before church. I know nobody in here did that before you came. Praise the Lord. Right? You guys were just all happy and praising each other all the way from the house to the church. Praise the Lord. Super Christian. <laughs> it's a battle sometimes. Let's be real. You're getting ready to come to church and all of a sudden, you know, 10 visitors show up that you hadn't seen for years. Why? Because the devil doesn't want you in God's house. You start having car trouble. Am I talking to anybody? You start feeling sick. The kids get sick. Amen. The baby throws up. Then you change the baby. 
Then you're walking out and then it poops on itself and then you change there. Hello? And it goes on and on. Am I talking to any new mothers in here tonight? Hallelujah. What I'm saying is this, is the devil wants to see if he can push your buttons and gain access. Hello, somebody. Then there's Saul. We know David, he's a fighter. He fought, amen, the good fight. He was not perfect, amen, but you know what? The Bible says he had a heart after God. What does that mean? That it means he had a heart to repent. That's all it really means. It means that whenever he made mistakes, uh, he didn't get prideful and, and uh, you know, he, he had a sensitive heart. Nathan was able to tell him, you know what, David, you're the man. And then he was able to listen and say, man, I'm sorry, God, please search me. He was able at another time to say, God, please don't number the people because of my sins. If you've got to deal with anybody, deal with me, Lord. It's me. Hello, somebody. This is why the Bible says that he had a heart after God's own heart. Why? Because he knew that he failed miserably or, or largely, can we put it that way sometimes, uh, but at the same time, he also had a repentant heart. So we're either going to be like, David, or you're going to be like Saul. Saul's a different character altogether, isn't he? 1 Samuel 17, 24, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. Saul was a man that was full of the flesh. Amen? He catered to the flesh. He didn't really care about godly things. He cared about how he looked. He cared about what people thought about him more than what God thought about him. Am I talking to anybody tonight? Honor me before the people. What does it profit a man if he gains the world but loses his soul tonight? Am I talking to anybody? And so here's Saul. I'm in several places we read where he would take the armies to the battle he probably even had war party meetings amen he probably had war strategies probably even shined his sword and shined his armor amen but every time he would see the difficulty he was one of the first ones to flee hello somebody he had no problem sending others to battle but he didn't want to be in the fight himself hello somebody Saul lacked in many areas. See, because the spirit of Saul always talks big, it always tries to discourage anyone else from going on and pursuing. And it always tries to kill the Davids that are wanting to fight. Can you say amen? We know that Saul was disobedient in his heart. 1 Samuel 15, 19, and 26. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you do evil in the sight of the Lord? But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. Why? Because he did not submit to what God said. So in this fight, we have to decide how we're going to fight, who we're going to be. Am I talking to anybody tonight? Here's David, amen. It says in 1 Samuel 17, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing that he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go the Lord be with you. Saul didn't want to fight. He wanted to sit on the sidelines and look good. But here's David, man. This is what I love about David. There was something in his spirit that says, you know what, man? I'm not going to allow the enemies of God to defy the Holy One of Israel. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Many commentators believe that, that he was just a teenager at this time. 
He couldn't even put on the armor. It was too big for him. But there was a fight in him. I said there was a fight in him. This is the type of fight that it's going to have to take if we're going to make it for the kingdom of God. You're going to have to have that same type of heart, that same type of spirit. Can you hear me tonight? Listen, David was flesh like you and I. I'm sure he probably had some doubts. Hello? I'm sure when he stood up against Goliath and he began to see this giant, he was like, oh, man, what did I get myself into? But, man, there was something about him that he wanted to stand for truth. He wanted to stand for righteousness. Can you say amen? He didn't care about ridicule from others. Hello? But he was just like you and I. He got tired. We see him in the cave of Agilum. He's wrestling with his own humanity. But over and over, David came to that place where he says, you know what, man? I need to stand up for what is good and for what is right. Listen, if you're going to make it for the long haul in serving God, don't give the enemy access tonight. Don't give him power over you. This is very simple tonight. Because the only power that you have, that he has over you, is the power that you give him. David was no different than you and I. We need to understand that. We're in a battle tonight, hallelujah, but we understand that Jesus already won the war. Can you give the Lord a clap offering tonight, hallelujah. The Bible says in this text, lay hold of eternal life. Amen, lay hold of eternal life. It says that Jesus is coming back. How many believe that tonight? We don't know when. Nobody knows the day, nobody knows the hour, hallelujah, but the Bible tells us he's coming back. And when he comes back, we need to be fighting on the right side. Can you say amen? Here's Paul, end of his life. Paul's life in ministry, powerful example of what it is to live for God. Even in the middle of persecution, not only did he fight the good fight, he says, I finished the race. I kept the faith. Listen, beloved, one day we're going to stand before God, and that's what we need to be able to say. I fought this good fight. It wasn't always easy, but I stayed in there, and I finished the race. Hello? I finished the race. I kept the faith. Paul knows his death is near, but he has no regrets. Why? Because Jesus had control of his life. Can you say amen? I said Jesus had control of his life. We remember when he had an encounter with the living God. He's on the Damascus Road. Amen. He's got a warrant in his hand to kill Christians. He thought he was doing God's work, God's will. God had a different plan for him. Knocks him off of his horse. Blinds him. Called him to the Gentiles. Amen. Powerful, powerful ministry. But you know what? If you read the word of God, many times people came against Paul, didn't they? Over and over, hallelujah. Even Peter, amen, he came against Paul pretty wickedly. He didn't understand that God had a powerful plan for this man. And here he is at the end of his death. No regrets. He had lived life to the fullest. He had fulfilled all that Christ had charged him to do. Hallelujah. And you can almost feel this sense of fulfillment and contentment in his words. He says, man, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. No doubt as he's saying that, think about everything that Paul had went through in his life. Think about Paul. In shipwrecks often. In perils often. Hello? Beaten. Took in before kings, amen, accused, ridiculed, shipwrecked, in prison. And here he is at the end of his life. And he's saying, you know what, man? Everything that I went through for God was worth it. The ups, the downs, the trials, people coming against me, 
the battles, it's all worth it. Why? Because I'm ready to meet my Savior. I'm ready to pass through the threshold of eternity. I'm ready to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what I'm saying tonight, church. It's not the easiest thing serving God, is it? If it was, everybody would be doing it. Hallelujah. It's easy to sin. It's easy to live out in the world. It's easy just to give yourself to the flesh. But to do right, to crucify the flesh, to walk in obedience, to walk in what we know is true. Hallelujah. That's a fight. Hello. Paul said it. I find myself doing things that I don't want to do. And the things that I do want to do, I can't get myself to do them. Anybody ever felt that way? What's he talking about, man? He's talking about the fight. And here he is. I have fought the good fight. I ran the race, finished the race, and I've kept the faith. As I close tonight, anything good in life is worth fighting for. Here's this dog. Amen? All of a sudden, a lion comes after its owner. And if that dog, it was just a puppy, just a puppy facing a lion. Hello? And if it didn't do something, then that lion probably would have killed its owner and then turned around and killed him. But because it engaged the battle, because it didn't hesitate, because it fought for something that it felt was good, it was able to fend off the lion enough for the owner and somebody else to help back. Isn't that how it is many times? When we begin to become under assault, but we begin to fight back, and this enemy is a lot bigger than us, isn't he? Listen, I know you're bad, but you ain't better than the devil. Hello. He's a spiritual being, not being like free holy, but a spiritual being. Amen. He's a fallen angel. He's been at this a long time. I mean, he's a lot better than you and I are. But what is amazing to me is that when we begin to fight back, he may bite us and give us some, some skull fractures sometimes. But then all of a sudden, our big brother comes to fight for us. Can you say amen? He begins to intercede. Jesus steps in. Hallelujah. Our Father in heaven begins to do what only he can do. Hallelujah. And he helps us and saves us. And in the end... In the end, we've got joy. Why? Because we're united with him. Can you show that next picture tonight? Hallelujah. Here's the dog and its owner nursed back from the brink of death. From the brink of death. The dog was having seizures. Hello? That lady would have been dead. That dog would have been dead. But it fought a good fight. Hello? Tonight, you're in here. Anything good in life is worth fighting for. Don't give your enemy a foothold. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a clap offering tonight, church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bow your hearts with me in respect to God, church. Very simple message. I pray to encourage some folks tonight. Uh, it's a constant battle. It's a constant battle. This flesh that we war with. Good, evil, right, wrong. Sometimes you win, sometimes you cave. It's not an excuse for sin. It's not an excuse for disobedience. But hopefully we can have an understanding and a reality that when we begin to fight back, God sees the fight in us and he begins to get involved as well. And he can do what we can never do. The ultimate prize tonight, at the end of the, at the, end of the race, at the end of the fight, is that we are reunited, hallelujah, with the one who saved us. This dog fought to save its owner. In the end, the owner ends up saving the dog. Hallelujah. It's a perfect picture of what it is to live for God tonight. It's not easy. It's a fight sometimes. The enemy of our soul comes against us. But man, when God gets involved, when God gets involved, you're in this place tonight, 
before I close the service, you don't know Jesus. Maybe you're away from God. Maybe your back's in your heart. Uh, I want to tell you tonight, man, God loves you. Gave his life for you. Shed his blood for you. There's no better life than the life lived in Christ tonight. And you say, you know what, preacher? I'm not living for God, man, but I want to open my heart and ask Jesus to come in. That's me. Would you pray for me? Here, raise your hand very quickly. Is anybody, anybody in here tonight before I go on to other things? I'm away from God. I'm back in my heart, pastor, but I need God tonight. I see that hand. God bless you. How many more tonight? Come on. God's dealing with you. Maybe, uh, maybe you were enlisted, but you stepped out of the fight. You stepped out of the fight. Will you re-enlist tonight? Will you get back in the fight? Because it's a fight that's worth fighting tonight. Hallelujah. And it's, this is Paul. He's saying, listen, man, I fought this fight. And, and you look at the life of Paul. There's times that he won battles and there's times that he had, that he, he was beat. But you know what, man? He finished the race. And that's what matters tonight. It matters that you finish the race. Some of you started this race and you've allowed the enemy to come in. You've allowed him to sidetrack you. You've allowed the world or different things, amen, to take your affections away from God. It's time for you to get back in the fight tonight. It's time for you to say, you know what, God, I need to finish this race. Why? Because tomorrow is not guaranteed for any one of us. Life is but a vapor. You're here today, gone tomorrow. Pastor, will you pray for me? Here's my hand very quickly. I'm not going to hold this out very long, but God's speaking to your heart. Uh, you want to get your heart right with Christ. God sees that hand. God sees that hand. God bless you. God sees that hand. God bless you. People being honest, being sincere with God. Thank God God sees that hand. Listen, man, there's no shame in repentance, friend. There's no shame in saying, man, I need, I need Jesus to help me. I need Jesus to forgive me. The altar, man, when I get preached to, that's, that's where I want to be. I want to be at the altar where I can get my heart right with God and say, God, I need you. This is who I am. Amen. I'm sinful flesh, but I need you, God, to set me free tonight. One last call. Pastor, I need, I need Jesus tonight. Would you pray for me? I need to repent tonight of some things. Would you pray for me? Here's my hand very quickly. Hallelujah. Very well. If you raise your hand, would you raise it up one more time in respect to God? Raise it up one more time. Hallelujah. If your hand is raised, will you please stand and just step out of your chair? I want to pray with you. The rest of us, let's stand tonight in respect to God. Feel the wonderful presence of God, church. Let's stand in respect to God. There's a few folks that are responding tonight. Maybe there's others. God was dealing with you. Uh, amen. You didn't raise your hand, but you want to respond tonight. We invite you to come. Uh, want to pray with you tonight. Amen. A simple prayer of salvation. A simple prayer of faith. Uh, this is the good fight. The fight of faith. Hallelujah. And I want to open this altar tonight. God spoke to you. God dealt with you tonight. Amen. Listen, you need to fight. Anything good in life is worth fighting for. Your salvation is worth fighting for. Your marriage is worth fighting for. Hallelujah. Your walk with God. Your ministry. Amen. Uh, uh, your children. Uh, the list goes on and on. The devil would try to take back uh, he would try to take back, amen, those things that God, those promises that God has given you, just like the Philistines, amen, trying to come against uh, David at Sokoth. God says, listen, you've got a right tonight. You've got an inheritance. Uh, don't give the enemy a foothold tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, Lamb of God, we give you glory and praise. Sida la mando God. Hallelujah. Let's seek God's face at this altar, amen. We're going to sing a song of worship as these are up here praying tonight. You lift your hands in worship, church, and let's give Him glory. Hallelujah. God, we love you. We worship you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. New right spirit within me. Alamando, yaralamanda.
Oh, sing it out, Lord. Cast me not away. Lift your hands to the Lord tonight. Cast me not away from thy presence, oh Lord. And take not thy Holy Spirit from Let's give him praise, beloved. Let's worship him tonight. Hallelujah, la la mandor yorro bondoro bor yorro bondoro lo lo lo. Give him glory, church. Worship his name tonight. Oh, Lamb of God, we worship you. Ya la la mandor yorro bondoro lo yorro bondoro lo bo shai. Mighty God, we give you praise and glory tonight. Hallelujah. How many believe this is a good fight tonight? It's a fight worth fighting. Amen. The devil would like to lie to you. He'd like to tell you, you know what, man, it's not worth it. Amen. If, you know, it, it, it all, his strategy is always when we're going through it, isn't it? Man, if this is how it's going to be and, and this is how people are and this is how that is and, you know, what's the point? What's the use? It's the same lies that he's been telling forever. Why does he keep telling those lies? Because they work. Because people listen to them. Because through those lies, he can get people to stop fighting. And this is why we have to be reminded by the word of God constantly. You know what, man? Hey, you're in a battle. That's fine. But it's a good fight. And it's one worth fighting. Why? Because, hey, we might win this battle. But my Bible tells me in the end, in the end, we win. Can you say amen? In the end, hallelujah, why? Because Jesus already won the war. One day we're going to be reunited with our Savior. Hallelujah. We're going to be reunited with our Savior. And then in the final battle, the Bible says that even Satan is going to be brought before God. He's going to be judged and cast into the lake of fire. Amen. To the great abyss. And when, he, when, when that happens, I'm praying that I can be front row. Maybe even get a foot in there and just knock them off the edge. Hallelujah. <laughs> what a good God we serve. Can you say amen? Fight the good fight of faith, church. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a clap offering tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Appreciate you tonight, church. Uh, pray for us as we're getting ready to go tomorrow night. Uh, we've got a midnight flight. Hallelujah. So pray for us. Uh, amen. Uh, once we get to Guayaquil, uh, we've got a three-hour ride through the treacherous mountains i got everybody scared look at that <laughs> i'm kidding amen we're going to take the safe route this time hallelujah <laughs> uh but we've got a three-hour ride through the mountains uh to get to uh cuenca hallelujah and so we're excited to go we're believing that god's going to move pray for the church beloved pray for this revival uh we're going to be out there outreaching every day uh, witnessing, trying to get people to come to the church. Man, I'm believing God for a powerful, powerful breakthrough for them. Amen. Uh, so let's give the Lord a clap offering and let's thank him. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful is your name. Hallelujah. We're going to dismiss in a word of prayer, church. You go in the blessing of God. Be here. Be faithful. I would love to see some new faces when I come back. Uh, hallelujah. Be on outreach. Uh, be a witness for Christ. Amen. Invite people to church. Uh, hallelujah. Hold it down. Amen. As we're away this next week. Uh, uh, also, very quickly, before we close, I need to meet with all the ushers uh, and then all the leaders. Uh, and so, praise God. Let's bow our hearts before Lord Church. You go in the blessing of God tonight. I want to ask if... Uh, Brother Robert Angel, can you close off in a word of prayer? Amen. Lord bless you tonight, beloved.